Hey there, friends. So I wanted to talk to you about a topic that uh, I've been kind of playing with for the last uh, couple of weeks. And that is, what does it take to be a successful buy and hold investor, right? What does it take to be asset rich and cash happy? And this, I really started to think about this when these shirts, right, showed up. This is, this is the arch, right? See that arch there? Again, arch is obviously asset rich, cash happy. Don't you just love that arch, smiling face, money just raining down, right? Raining down on houses, right? That's if you don't under, see that there, that underneath the arch are actually houses. Very proud of my, uh, my daughter. She created this and uh, I look at this shirt all the time and it makes me happy. But I've been looking at it going, okay, so what does it take to be asset rich, cash happy, right? Or a successful buy and hold investor. And I think there's five things that it takes. Uh, the first one is, and this is step one in my course, and it's what I tell everyone is you need to learn your market. You need to learn what your market's average deal is, right? And you can do this right out of the MLS, right out of the multiple listing service, right out of realtor.com, right out of Redfin. If you spend 30 to 90 days, depending on your schedule, just looking at the base facts of your market and a set criteria, which we talk about in the course, you will learn your market better than 99% of the real estate agents. And why is that important? It's because one of the things that you need to do as a buy and hold investor to be good at it is you've got to say yes to good or great deals. If you don't learn your market, you're going to be looking at lots and lots and lots of bad deals, huge amount of average deals, and the good and great deals will get lost. I am giving you the keys to finding and only working on good and great deals. In a hot market like we are today, 1% of the deals that are in the multiple listing service are good or great. And unless you do what I talk about in the course right out of the gate, you might get lucky, yeah, but you also might win the lottery, right? So I do believe that one of the things you need to do, even if you work a full-time job, even if you have all these family responsibilities, is you need to do step one of my course, which is learn the market. And if you don't know how, right, I give that to you in the online course. That's number one. Number two is you need to focus, right? If we're going to be buy and hold investors, let's focus on being the best buy and hold investors we can. Don't get distracted by, distracted by social media and the wholesalers and the flippers and the note buyers and the lease option and all this other stuff. You already have a busy life. Let's pick your lane and let's walk down that lane together. If you happen to be a buy and hold investor like me, I would, I would welcome you to subscribe to this channel and just let's go together. And if you have questions, take advantage of my subscriber questions and just leave a question in, in any comment on any video. If you've got to uh, do chunk money, which is flipping and wholesaling, uh, there's lots and lots of people out there that are great for that. I'm sorry, that's, that's not my skill set. Uh, I do some of the flipping, but that's not what I feel great teaching and, and won't do that. So pick your lane, let's go forward. And by picking your lane, it also means ignoring every other lane, right? So let's figure that out what that else for you. Number three is, I'm sorry, but you need to reduce expenses. Being a great buy and hold, you know, real estate investor, because when you buy and hold, you're getting little chunks of cash every month. You need to reduce expenses because you need to grind and hustle and do all of that stuff to earn money during your day job. Then the next one is you need to save. And the best way to increase savings for most of us is to reduce expenses. You can also increase revenue or income but for most of us, the easiest thing to do is reduce expenses. So take a look at it. I've talked about it many times. When we got started, we were living on 100% of our income. And over time, we got that down to 50%. I think you can do that too. Because when you earn and you truly save, you'll have capital to invest. And again, buy and hold rentals is something I've done and it can change your financial future, even if you only get to four. Number four is you need to conservatively finance. I saw too many people lose everything in the crash. Once the domino started falling, um, you know, bad things happened. You know, there were people that had very, very impressive balance sheets that lost it all. Um, 
people are far too focused on balance sheets, in my opinion, when you should be looking at the income statement. So if you have a day job, you want to be low stressed, you want to just take positive steps forward in your financial future, put an extra 10% down. Let's make sure this asset cash flows. Let's make sure your tenants can pay it off. That's what we're trying to do, right? You know how you get a tenant to pay off your house? Is you own it for 30 years, right? That's how it happens. So conservatively finance. And when you conservatively finance, if the market gets cut in half tomorrow, doesn't matter, right? You can hold through. We owned, I don't know, let's just call it 80 doors when the crash happened and lots of people lost everything when they had less. The reason we didn't lose anything was because they were all cash flow. They were all conservatively financed, right? They were probably 55% LTV at the peak. But after the crash, they went all the way down to probably 100% because the value got whacked, but income went up. So again, please, please, please conservatively finance. And number five, right, if you're just starting out, I strongly suggest you find someone that you can follow. Again, if you're a buy and hold investor, I welcome you to subscribe and follow this. Learn their story. Right? I've done a favor for you. Again, if you're a buy and hold investor, I wrote this book, One Rental at a Time. It's available on Amazon. Check it out. It's, I think it's $14.99 paperback, $9.99 Kindle. But I took great care to write about our entire 15-year journey. And it's written in a way that it's not really time boxed. Right? We wrote about hot markets, the top, the crash, the bottom, no bank money, lots of bank money private. We, t we talk about everything in the book, so hopefully you can learn from it. And I hope that's a book you refer back to um, in five, 10 years when the market cycle changes. Like, oh my gosh, what did they do during that time? And then if you do find someone you like, trust, and they have something f to, um, to help you, invest a little bit of money in, in improving yourself, right? I happen to have a course that I priced at, at under $200, which is less than a college class, because I want to help people get started, how to do it, how to learn a market, how to do all those things. I priced it there even though I had people advise me to price it higher. And that's not the motivation for me. My motivation is to take people, have the, have the interest and kind of feel stuck. I don't want you to gamble, right? I want you to be an investor. And that's what I'm trying to do. So at the end of the day, those are the five things that I think makes it, you, helps you become a successful buy and hold investor. Bye.